Hey St. John, it's Dion, and this is a Midsummer Update. Now we are about six months into our two-year ministry vision next, where we are pursuing people like never before, we're mobilizing the next generation of world changers, and we are taking our campus to the next level. Over the last six months, we've made significant progress on those first two things. We just welcomed a new associate pastor, Doug Moss, to help lead our house church movement. We've sent mission teams all over the country and world who are pursuing people in the name of Jesus. We just had VBS here, which was incredible. 800 plus kids led by 600 volunteers. Half of those volunteers themselves, students, middle school and high school students. Just last night, I had 40 middle school and high school students in my backyard for summer sessions. They're getting together every week. If you've got a student who's not involved, they need to. But we are about to get to the place where we finally start to make some progress on that last part of our vision, taking our campus to the next level. We're on the doorstep of some big changes happening here in our sanctuary. Now, starting about 18 months ago, we began studying this issue. In fact, we sent a congregational survey to you and asked you questions like, what changes could we make to our campus to make it more inviting for unchurched guests. A year ago, last summer, we did research amongst unchurched people and we asked them some of the things that, that repulse them or attract them to a church. Just a few months ago, I did listening groups with a number of you to discover more about what your values are and what you would do and what you'd like to see us do here in our sanctuary space. And we learned some things along the way. First, we learned that our sanctuary is disjointed. The purpose for which our sanctuary has been used over the last 25 years has changed. And because of that, a lot of things have been added. And those things were added, but not always in the most integrated way. And so we have black pipe and drape all over the walls. We have screens that are put in sort of odd places. And uh, that's one of the things that we heard. We also heard that it's cluttered and that clutter can be distracting. As we try to create a good environment for our live stream, it involves different pieces of modular technology that we need to get things out there. And we know we have hundreds of people on live stream, and yet it doesn't always make for the best environment in the room. And then we also just know that it's outdated. It's 25 years old and things need to change in 25 years. And yet a lot hasn't been done here. So I'm excited to say that we're working with a designer now and hopefully, prayerfully, starting in August, we're gonna begin work on the front part of our sanctuary. And here are some of the things that you're gonna be able to see. You're gonna see integrated technology. We value the screens that we have in our worship space. We, we value the use of technology. It's important to reach a tech savvy world. And yet we're gonna change the way those are used so that they're more integrated. They don't feel like an afterthought. They feel like they actually fit in the architecture. We're also, we've been talking about this for a while, we're gonna finally upgrade our sound system. That will help with the articulation of spoken word, but will also help our music sound better and sound cleaner and be even better to sing along with. You're gonna see a cleaner platform, chancel, stage area, whatever you call it. Over the years, we've added onto it to use it for different purposes. And uh, we're just gonna start over and build a platform that is exactly for what we need it to be now. One of the things that we've learned is that you love to have some prominent focal points, sacred focal points. I call them sacred anchors as a part of your worship environment. And so you're gonna see a prominent cross. You're gonna see an altar that is, again, prominently placed to emphasize our connection with communion and the life-giving gift that we receive there. We're gonna make way for a future dedicated baptismal area. So again, people see the importance of baptism for life change and even remember their own baptism. We're gonna see some of the stained glass windows in the sanctuary become operable again. We'll get some motorized shades that can let natural light in and then close them when we need them to be closed. Now, in order to make all of these things happen, some things that you've gotten accustomed to will need to go away, and that's just progress, that's change. In fact, you can read more about everything that we're gonna do as this progresses by going to our FAQ page that we've established on our next website. Now, this is just a start of what I would love to see happen to our sanctuary long-term. Over the next five years, I hope lots of things get refreshed, but through next, we're gonna be able to make a, a big dent on some things that matter most. So in the meantime, what can you do? The first thing you can do is pray. Pray that contractors can fit us in in the right timeline and pray that there are no unseen expenses and, and pray that we make wise decisions. The second thing is to check that FAQ page. As this project evolves, there'll be a lot of information there. And if you have a question that we're not answering, you can even post it there and we'll get an answer not only for you, but for everyone else. And the third thing is just to be generous, continue to be generous. We are paying for all of these things as we go. We will not go into debt in order to accomplish these things. Instead, we're gonna pay down debt over the next two years. So as you are generous and the more generous you are, the more and the quicker we can do to make this a great inviting space for our community. Well, that's it, that's the update. 
I hope you're having a great summer. This is such an exciting time to be a part of St. John. I'm so glad to be on this journey with you.